room. To see you there. Hey, thank you very much, Tim. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Paige Craig. Very good to be here. I was kind of surprised that Tim would actually ask me to talk about trust. Um, if you look at my background, it might be very different than what you would think about someone you might trust. Um, on one hand, on one hand, I was in the Marine Corps, so maybe you trust me for being a Marine. Um, but along the way, I joined the intelligence community, and I did a lot of things around the world, uh, in, in Iraq and Afghanistan and around the world. And um, you're talking about you take trust uh, for granted sometimes. And in my profession, trust wasn't something that we took for granted. Um, there was that gut feel that you talked about, but there was a science and an art to trust. Because for us, who we worked with, um, it was life and death in many cases. And sometimes it did result in death. Um, I, I did lose guys because we trusted the wrong people. And I worked in a, in a very unique space where we had to extend trust to people we didn't know very well. Um, we had to work with people who would uh, bring us information, would br bring us access to um, terrorist groups, uh, very dangerous situations, and our biggest asset was people. And we didn't go into these countries with uh, a lot of people at our disposal. In many cases, it was me or me and a buddy running around Iraq or Afghanistan trying to build teams of people to help us get things done. So when Tam wrote me, it was very interesting to go from being a, a Marine to an intelligence guy. Uh, I built a company that did well. I've been angel investing for two years. So trust is not something I've ever really taken for granted. Um, not to attack you, but, but a lot of people do take trust for granted. You know, we meet someone at a bar, meet someone that's pitching us for money. And so trust has been something I actually think about a lot. I've thought about it from the national security perspective. I think about it from an angel investing perspective. I think about it, you know, uh, when I date someone, you know, I think about trust maybe in a way that a lot of people don't. But what I want to talk to you about today is something that I, as an investor, uh, one of my themes, I've been a thematic investor, and one of my themes is transparency. Uh, I, I have a big interest in investing in companies that uh, promote transparency, and here's the reason. When you get to trust and you think about transparency, one of the biggest inefficiencies in this world is the lack of trust between people. I'm not talking about just emotional trust, like, are you going to break my heart? or you're gonna to try to kill me in Western Iraq. I'm talking about the trust of like, who do you work with? Who do you put money behind? Who do you back? Uh, my co-founder, uh, Zhao, is here today. And Zhao and I only met up uh, what, about 45 days ago? About 45 days ago. Uh, doing way too many shots of tequila at a Red Point party in San Francisco. <laughs> and we didn't know each other. One of the first discussions we had, we were first talking about angel investing together, and we realized that we wanted to do something big together but we didn't actually know each other. We were introduced to a common friend, not the tequila, but a guy named Peter Pham. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember Zhao asking me as we sat down at a TechCrunch table during a break, you know, I don't know you guys. I was like, you know, and we don't know you. We have a third co-founder. And how do you figure out how you're going to work together? When I think back to Zhao and I meeting, I wish I could have, I wish I could take you know, the several weeks it took us to get to know each other before we decided to build a company, I wish I could wipe that away. That gap of time that it took to figure out would we trust each other or work, and we're still doing it today. We've just, you know, started building this thing a couple weeks ago, and we're still figuring out trust, and that's a very complex thing, but think of all the interactions we have in life where you're wasting time because you're trying to get to know the person. I have to get to know you. I have to know, you know, are you reliable with my capital? Are you the kind of entrepreneur that's going to stick through a company and make it successful? Are you smart enough to iterate and to pivot? Now, that's just one thing from the investing perspective. Now, think about dating or buying things online. You know, what did eBay do? They created a rating system where relatively anonymous people could meet online and buy things. So when I talk about transparency as a theme to invest in, I think about improving the world, not just from buying stuff online, I actually think about improving the world from policy, from the services we create, the products we make for the world. So think, think about this. All the decision makers in the world, whether that's a product manager or a CEO, 
or someone in Congress making a decision about how to allocate scarce resources. They have uh, a middleman, whether a company or a person who feeds them information. And where does that information come from? Information many times comes from a company whose job is to collect data and feedback. Now, when you go back to that root data, where does that data come from? It could come from a uh, California State Fair where you filled out a form to wait an RV and you entered some information about yourself. It could come from an online form that you entered as you're browsing the internet. So there are people out there whose job is to collect information every day. But when I think about it, being both in the intelligence side of life and living, you know, making life or death decisions about information that I get from people and from systems, the technology we used, and as, you know, a CEO looking at data that I get when I try to make decisions on salary and who to hire, there's a lot of intermediaries in life. There are all these intermediaries that filter information. So transparency for me is a powerful movement. We are finally at a point in history where people are building systems that allow us to share information. And the best ones are made to incentivize you to share accurate information. So to take this abstract thought and make it a reality, Transparency is the ability for all of us to share honest information about ourselves. So people ask me, why do you participate in Foursquare and Blippi? Actually, I don't participate in Blippi because of other reasons. But Blippi and Foursquare and Twitter and Facebook are all companies that fit into my transparency model. They all allow us to share, if we choose to, honest information about ourselves. In some cases, Blippi you know, is very accurate. Maybe Twitter, you can make it up, but all these companies, whether it's Quora, or it's Facebook, or it's food spotting, you're sharing information about yourselves. And what I think about is this world that gets developed 10, 20 years from now. We're, we've reduced a lot of these inefficiencies about how people meet each other, or how they choose to do business. Because we skip over that period where we have to find out who you are, and what you're about, and what you're interested in, and what you buy, and where you go and what you value, and what you want in life, and what you're good at. So think back to all these interactions you have, whether personal, social, professional, whatever it is, and think about all the time we waste just trying to get to know someone. Now, I'm not saying wipe out that get to know phase. I'm saying let's just accelerate that process. Let's look at all the billions of interactions that happen between people, and let's invest in transparency. You know, think of all the interactions we'd have, how many more we would have if we could skip over you know, the four-week interview process to find out, you know, did this guy or did this lady actually produce these sales figures? So what am I saying? I guess my one big point for me is, as an investor, if I were to set up a fund today, and I won't, because I actually like building companies more than I like running funds, but if someone wanted to set up a fund, I would love to see a transparency fund. A fund that invests in innovators that actually create new transparency. Now there's great companies out there now, but think right now about the things that you keep secret or that other people keep secret. It doesn't have to be deep secrets, but whether it's fashion, or it's uh, the food you like, or it's dating. I think tangentially we have systems out there that have dating, but is there a system out there that actually lets people who date rate the other person or share the experience? There's a lot of things we do in life that we could share and expose to the world. So I'd love to see a transparency fund set up. That's on the investing side. To the innovators in this room, I'd like you to think about what in this world could be exposed to society in many different ways, whether you have to opt in, be registered, or you just throw it out there for the world to see. What can you take that exists right now, that exists inside a closet, inside a closed room, inside your head? You know, what part of life can you make more transparent to make the world better? Now, sometimes I have investors that think it's a crazy idea to take private information and make it public. I actually think there's a lot of opportunity here. You know, I, I was talking to some guys a few months ago about phone numbers. Who we call, when we answer a phone, how long we talk, who we respond to, the frequency. You know, I'd love to see a system out there that would take all that private phone information and just throw it out there. Now, do I know what that would produce? I, I really don't. I really don't know what that would do, but I'd love to see innovators take things like phone numbers or my health. Think about this one. Think about health. 
all of us possesses, you know, in unison, if we shared all of our health information, every time we got sick, every time we got hurt, the pills, the medicine, the treatments, if we could take all of that and aggregate across the world and share it, do you think doctors would maybe improve their services? Do you think maybe we would have better knowledge of how to save people, of how to heal people, of how to solve drug interaction problems? You probably could. Look at Google, the whole famous story about flus, right? They look at search terms online around flu medicine, and that lets them predict when flus are emerging. It's a perfect example of sharing information. But what if we could actually choose to share our health records and our treatments? I know that's a scary thing, but I, I would actually elect to participate in that. If that could make the world better, if we could share our individual health information. Now, you don't need to know that I, Paige Craig, have a kidney disease. I don't, but if I did, if I shared that with the world and we all shared the information, would we make the world better? So that's one example of sharing information that I would like to see. So if it's phones, or if it's healthcare, or if it's anything out there, I really don't care what it is. I'd like people to start chopping up the world and saying, what information exists today that I could share with the world and make it better? Does anyone, I mean, I, I actually like ideas. Does anyone here have like private information that they think would actually be better if it was shared with the world? And I don't want a secret, but what is a space we could take right now and share with the world and make it better? Yeah. I actually thought about this dating idea that you touched on briefly. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. There's still a lot to work out there. But right. What can we do to start kind of like tracking that social map and make it available so that, you know, like people who are, you know, good people who are still on the market, you know, get, get that kind of street cred and make I love it. people that are single for a reason. Yeah. You, you know, you don't have to I'll get some advice from you later. <laughs> no, I, in fact, I, I actually recently was helping some folks with a new dating model, not around that, but I like the idea. I mean, we, we interact with dates so many people, and it's true that you meet someone who is probably a great person, but not great for you. But where do you share the information today? You don't. You tell your girlfriend or you tell your friends, good guy, but you know he wants something different in life. Or maybe not so good guy. Uh, that's what the Gov 2.0 movement is about, right? Um, yeah. Information yeah. Information public access, but actually making it access, easily accessible. Yeah. And, uh, easy to interpret. If it works out, you're, you're correct. There's a big movement to share government information, which is a different area. We've been talking, in some cases, about consumer stuff that could be fun. But when I say that I love transparency, it's actually for some of the other things that come down the road. Let's take an example of uh, gay marriage. I was, in the, I was in the military and worked with a lot of folks and got a call um, after I did my last company from the Pentagon, asking me what I thought about gay marriage. And, you know, in my opinion, it was that it's the morally right thing to do. You know, one of the big things we do when we fight overseas is we go into countries saying, you know, we come in not with just a military might, but a moral right. And yet at home, if we're telling people that we don't recognize gay marriage, you actually lose the credibility of the moral right. Now, so that's one input, right? But when I talk to this person, you say, you know, the internal surveys from the leaders tell us that Marines and soldiers don't support gay marriage, or it would hurt their mission. And yet, a lot of these decision makers they're talking to are 50 and 60 year old guys who are really filtering the reality. Because the reality is being in the Marine Corps and working with a lot of these folks, most of us actually don't care anymore. Now, you do have pockets that do care, but what the information going back to the Pentagon was being filtered through folks that either had their own bias and used that to filter information. There was no honest feedback. And my point in making that is that I think a lot of government decisions are made based on bias or lack of access to what's really in the thoughts and minds of the people that matter. We make decisions on how to redistrict a county or where to give water rights to, or bigger issues like you know, the right to marry a person of the same sex. Where is that information coming from? And when a politician makes that decision, are they getting honest information? So, you know, Gov 2.0, the idea of sharing information is huge. And I think when it comes down to making policy decisions, if decision makers had access to true information, 
Not information filtered through some research company, some contractor hired to figure out an answer, or going through managers or decision makers, if it actually went down to the very root level, all the millions and billions of people that matter, that we would make better decisions on a policy level. We'd also make better products. I mean, think of how much, how many resources are wasted every year because some marketing department and product department has to guess what phone, what TV, what form factor people want. Where do they get that information? They have to hire companies to figure it out. Sometimes they guess. I think on the flip side of this discussion and trust is the fact that there is another group that wants to misuse that type of information. Yes, I think that's a good point. And, and, and how do you protect yourself against that, right? I, I think everybody, and, and probably 95% of the population, would say, yes, this is a good thing, let's share this stuff. Yeah. And then there's the 5% that will misuse it. An example being, you know, I, I go online, I want to see a demo of a new product, and within hours I get spammed with phone calls and email messages that, that was not the intent of me sharing that information with them. I just wanted to learn something new. Yeah. So what, what are your, you know... Opinions about that side of that. So, so my opinion on that, and I've, I've actually thought about this a lot, because it goes even deeper, which is that this movement has to be participatory. You have to elect to give the information. I would never support a government or a system that forces you to give it up, um, in very rare cases. So it's got to be participatory. You have to choose as an individual to, to give it up. And you should be made aware that the information is being collected about you. And that you choose. So that's why I like Twitter. You know. We all know that when we tweet and put something out there, that it's out there to the world. And, and those are probably some of the issues with Facebook that didn't really tell you how the information is being used. But if you just tell us, look, you know, you've agreed, you put it there, it's out there. Blippi does that. Um, what you're talking about are companies that collect information and then they retarget you. You know, the retargeters do this. There's a lot of models. Bigger issues, though, around privacy becomes, you know, I participate in Foursquare and a lot of other things there are personal safety issues, right? You start to share where you live, where you're at, your home can be, you know, there's all these stories about people's homes being robbed. You've overshared information, or you get assaulted. So there are little tiny things, and on the individual level that matters, it's very important, but the macro perspective to me is this. We are finally in an age where I don't think we have a government that can threaten us and take, you know, basically attack us, you know. A lot of our individual civil, civil liberties, our rights to freedom, our rights to privacy, um, this was born in an era when we were actually afraid of a government having the power to come into our home, to put soldiers in our home, to, you know, to spy on us. I think for Western demo you know, for democracies and some, some citizens, we're actually at a point where we can share without the threat of government hurting us. I also think that by sharing, the gains outweigh the risk. So by sharing information, yes, on a tactical level, people may, might get robbed, or you might be ridiculed or exposed for some health information you reveal. In aggregate, society is better off. I'll give you a, a big example of that. I'm, even though I lived in a world where information was classified, and I still, have to, I still do respect that, I think we're at a point where the government needs to start taking classified information and actually releasing it to the public. And, and not just to, to validate why we, we do this stuff, because I actually don't think that's all that as important as the other thing, which is that we're in an age where private citizens can actually participate in the intelligence process. So think of this country, you know, hundreds of thousands of men and women go downrange in Iraq and Afghanistan. And for a long time, one of the biggest threats was IEDs. They were being blown up by bombs. And a lot of smart people were trying to look at this data and figure out trends. Where were the bombs being made? Where did they come from? Where were the most dangerous intersections? And yet, the information in aggregate was highly classified. Only small groups of people, and maybe not the best people, like, you know, if you wanted to optimize, not the best people to look at this data and figure out the problem set. You know, why couldn't we just take all that data, throw it out there and say, look, you know, one in 10 of you probably know someone in the military, put your brain power against this. The model right now in the intelligence community is to take, to restrict this classified information, need to know, access. I totally understand it. And I think for decades it made more sense to keep information bottled up. You actually had a huge advantage over your adversary. 
I think we're at a turning point now. We're exposing that information to the public and letting the public participate, not just because you might understand why we engage in campaigns overseas, but you can actually participate. World War II, we brought civilians into the industrialized military. And civilians built bombs and weapons and torpedoes and timers. And I think there's a point in time very soon where the public, public will participate in the information war overseas. Both analyzing information, producing information. It doesn't exist now because of the security classification. And it takes a mental switch to think, I actually gain more by sharing than I lose. Because yes, the first stories when we do this will be some information was released and it led to something happening. Some source was killed, some operation was exposed. But I think in reality, the speed at which we move these days, we're actually better off sharing information. And it's, it's a radical idea, but I would like to see that, that happen. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on something like WikiLeaks, where they're taking that bottled up information that probably shouldn't be released. That probably what? That shouldn't be released. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I think WikiLeaks was definitively wrong. And that's not the way to do it. And uh, I think it was an ego decision. It, it was not done for the right reasons. Because I go back to participatory. I wouldn't, you know, you can't advocate taking someone's information. You know, we can't take classified information and throw it out there. I can't just because I believe that I want health records to be shared. I wouldn't go out and take your personal health records and throw them online. Because that's what they did. They said, I believe something so strongly They'll just throw it out there with no respect for you. And I think that is fundamentally wrong. We can't support that. People have to elect to participate in this process. If transparency is going to win, it's got to be done with full knowledge of why it's being done. So that's it. Um, to summarize, just want to talk about transparency and trust. So as an angel investor, uh, I would love to see innovators chop up the world and find the information that we should share. I think we will make the services and products and policies in the world a better place. And uh, it's actually not what I'm doing with my current company, hopefully the next one. So thank you very much, and have a great day.